This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTA for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes? So welcome back to another exciting episode from the good folks from Bendai, Japan. So why don't we start things off with the 1-100 scale Master Grade Full Armor Gundam Verka from the feature length film Gundam Thunderbolt. And without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudes to a two-parter series that I've been wanting to do for the last two and a half years But a good friend of mine's on Instagram was like hey I've seen your builds for the last four years Why not try something a little bit different and thus we have the full armor Gundam mobile suit cop now I will openly admit that I've been trying to stay away from the Kai series mobile suits because my very first experience was a Master Grade Sazabi, and as much as I really enjoyed it, it was a nightmare to build and finish. That was four years ago, so I think I have some good experience of actually handling a mobile suit quite like this because this kit definitely oozes that awesome retro vibe of the RX-70-2 Gundam, and I absolutely love that mobile suit, but with this armor platement and shield and weapon accessories, oh man. This is going to be absolutely a treat to build, and it's an A-plus in my book. On the other side, the Bonksart, you get the whole package on what this beast of a mobile looks when he's fully equipped. And from first glance, I know I'm going to have a lot of fun assembling this guy because the sheer craftsmanship that went into making this guy is beautiful. But enough about that, what's inside the box? So as always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual of this mobile suit. I have to say, it's very clean, very easy to look at, but let's talk about the water slide decals because my dudes and dudettes, there are a lot, I mean a lot of water slide decals, which can be a bit intimidating, but don't be discouraged, they're not. But behind the water slide decals are these thin plastic pieces that are going to go between the elbows and knees of the mobile suit. They're not really hard to put on and they're very easy to put into place when you do it correctly. So good on you, Bendai. Now back to the instruction manual. Like I said before, very clean, very easy to follow. Shouldn't have any problems finding out what you need to do for this mobile suit. But that all changes when you open up the very front page because you get this beautiful illustration of the mobile suit with and without the armor placements. But the one thing I love about this manual is it gives homage to where this mobile suit originally derived from, which is the original FA78-1 high grade kit that came out, I would say roughly 30, 40 years ago, which is great. And on the other page, you get this beautiful spread of what you can really, really pull off with this mobile suit, as well as an action base, which I really, really do appreciate that. But there are some problems with it, and I'll get into that in the video later on. Now, no mobile suit is not complete without an ace pilot, and this one particularly is piloted by Ios Flemings, which I don't particularly like the character, but I do love his choice of music. It's really good. As for the following page, gives you a brief layout on what you can expect for the entire runner set for this mobile suit. Now, if there's one thing I would love to point out for this instruction manual is the way how it's categorized. If you don't want to start with the head, you can start with the feet. If you don't want to start with the feet, you can start with the arms. You have your own choice on what you want to assemble and you won't get lost with the manual, which is great. Now, the one thing that's definitely a big issue is the action base. I know it's it comes what it comes with, but you might want to just fork over an extra like 20 bucks to get a much more sturdier action base. Now for the second to last page gives you this beautifully completed diagram on how to apply the water slide decals, do some light panel lighting, but this beautifully well designed color chart gives you an option to do some custom painting. Now it may look intimidating, but at the same time it's not. It's actually very welcoming because there are some people that when it comes to doing custom painting, it can be a bit of a nightmare to try to get the correct color. So it's nice that they get it nice and laid out for you. Now for the first runner pieces, gives you a plethora of shield pieces as well as the booster pack, but what's definitely offsetting is the unusual blue hue to the white pieces. Now, normally mobile suits have like a nice flat white to them, but this is definitely a nice change of pace. Kinda dig it. Next runners up are a bunch of interframe pieces for the hips and torso area, as well as a small assortment of clear pieces for the camera and eyes for the mobile suit. Now, if you don't want to deal with the clear pieces, which is totally fine, you can rock out with the pre-painted yellow pieces for the eyes, which is great. But for those who want to have that nice, clear aesthetic pleasing to it, you can actually work with the clear piece eyes to add some custom LED lights to it. I know it's not for everyone, but it's definitely there to give you that nice custom flair. Now as for the following runners, you get these beautifully dark red pieces and, as always, more interframe pieces, an action base which is nicely welcome, 
and two beam sabers in the back with some dark blue pieces. But the one thing I love about this Gundam is these bold orange pieces, which are gonna be used for the missiles and the shield, which definitely creates a nice color balance for this mobile suit. Next up is the final pieces for the runners, more red pieces, more dark blue pieces, and some sticker decals, which you can use for the boosters, eyes, and the cameras. Very straightforward, very easy to follow, shouldn't have any problems. So this part I like to call trial and error because my original intent for these boosters was to actually dremel out these tiny little holes with a hand dremel instead of an actual power dremel because that would actually melt the plastic. So I end up using the power dremel for like the bigger parts of the thrusters, but for the main ones I use a smaller one. But as I was done and testing out the LED lights through them, the lighting effect wasn't really authentic to the way I wanted, like how I saw in the anime. So the next best thing was to actually cut off all the pylons individually and hollow out that area and install a mega LED light, which actually worked out very, very well. But the mega LED lights are very, very bright. So to help um, reduce that brightness just a little was to actually add some translucent paper behind the thruster.
All right, my dudes and dudettes, that concludes part one of this awesome build. And I have to say, this booster pack has been an absolute treat to assemble, paint, and build. But hey, if you guys like this video and you want to see more, please hit that bell, hit subscribe, and like. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next video. Later.